Hello, my name is Artem Gaul. I am Big Data and Machine Learning Practice Lead at ClearScale. And today we are going to talk about the modern state of the MLOps and the main trend to develop this industry into the human-centered AI direction. The main extent of this development are fairness, explainability, model monitoring, and human augmented AI. Also, we are going to talk about which practices and components to utilize in your organization to improve your MLOps practices. The modern MLOps is not just a CI-CD framework to pushing models into production. Also, it must have a number of tools for the model monitoring, model explainability, fairness, and tools for the human intervention. The initial data analysis framework was a well-known CRISP DM, but ML industry quickly abandoned that framework because it does not count in a lot of ML-specific features, such as feature engineering, feature versioning, model validation and testing, continuous data quality control, and so on. But even the modern, well-trusted, good old ML pipeline also contains hidden traps. Research shows that technical depth still sits mostly in the same areas related to the data validation and verification, feature engineering, model monitoring, and general ML system audit. To solve all of these problems in a standardized fashion, the umbrella term of the human-centered AI was invented. The main components are monitor data quality, monitor model quality, monitor bias drift, monitor feature attribution drift, and general questions on the fairness and model explainability. That led to the expansion of the ML pipelines. The new areas of interest are questions on the quality labeling of large, huge volumes of the new streaming data, model monitoring, and human augmentation, which allows to audit the system in the mode of the production inference either denying or approving the inference results in those cases where the price of the error is too high, like healthcare and finance. All of the standard MLOps tasks such as CI-CD, testing, multi-tenancy are still areas of interest. Questions of model fairness and explainability are on the first line in the recent years. A lot of governmental regulators require capabilities for the in-place audit of any piece of the ML pipeline. As well, having high explainability allows you to gain business trust more quickly. Bias or absence of bias is extremely important to stop discriminations based on the race, gender, age, religion, and other sensitive traits. Instruments like SHEP and AIF360 are good entry points to solve those tasks. To monitor data quality, is to take the well-known process of the general base data analysis and apply it in the CI-CD manner. The same important components are still in the picture, like visualizing results, notifying the human operator, observing quality metrics and violations. Tools like DQ allow to track both statistical and custom metrics, such as missing columns, 
incomplete rows, etc. Model quality monitoring is tracking a model performance by comparing the live predictions with the actual ground truth levels. In general, the well known metrics for the loss minimization are still applicable, but they are integrated in the CI CD system on each steps of the pipeline. Model bias drift monitoring is targeted at detecting a difference between live data and the training set data. Most of the tools allow to detect the bias based on the gender, religion, race, etc. The metrics are white and quite interesting. In the same manner, feature attribution drift or how important is a specific feature for the real-life inference are also tracked in the CI-CD manner. The SHEP framework is a popular tool which combines a lot of the research and implementations. Human augmentation in general splits into two broad categories. First one is human augmented review. Main components are the capability to review the result by a several people and to combine the score for the final review. At the same time, it's very important to track the quality of the human review. For example, how good a human detects and corrects the problematic inference of a model. The second category of the human augmentation is human ground truth labeling, which requires cost-efficient, fast labeling of the huge arrays of the new incoming streaming data. Usually, such systems are built from scratch, or a popular solution from a cloud vendor is utilized. How to identify which exact components or practices from the human-centered ML ops are needed in your organization. If your team is not big, you expect low traffic and the compute complexity of your model training is low, then you should implement at least the drift monitoring. The standard CI-CD practices must remain untouched, and systems like Metaflow or MLflow should be utilized to bootstrap and automate mundane and repetitive MLOps tasks. If a company has a resource to power a relatively large MLOps company, then it is recommended to implement multi-tenancy control, model versioning, and to utilize vendor-specific ML ops optimizations, such as hyperparameter optimization or elastic inference acceleration. The data quality control is extremely important at this size of the company and product. In the case of the large enterprise, there is a possibility to build custom tools for the inference review and for the ground truth labeling. Extremely critical is the orchestration of the multi-model, multi-tenancy training, the capabilities of the common 
feature registry, and model registry. In practice, systems built around Kubeflow ecosystem prove to be extremely useful and trustworthy. It could be noted that human-centered AI is rather a general idea than a separate solution. General rules are to integrate all of the data and model quality control steps on each pieces of the ML pipeline, including real-time production inference. Also, you should remember that the moment your model is deployed to production, it's already obsolete. Build your systems with the human augmentation and advanced ML ops ideas in mind. At the end, let's talk about the future. A lot of the research is concentrated on the privacy preserving machine learning. Large research groups are also investing in the model's interpretability. The very promising is the future of the O2ML, both in the MLOps, open source frameworks, and in the cloud vendor implementations. Measuring human augmentation and deriving some statistics from that is also seems to be a very promising direction for the MLOps development. You could see the list of the extra resources at the end of this presentation. Thank you very much for your time. See you soon.